Today we're talking about the Chinese Yuan, or used in a sentence, you want to put your money in a different currency. The Yuan is the Eric Trump of currencies. It's attached to one of the biggest brands in the world, and yet it produces almost no value. As Bloomberg recently noticed when they ran an article headlined, the Yuan is Asia's weakest currency. Which boy is there some competition there. Asia is known for their strong currencies the same way Jackass is known for its nuanced take on human suffering. So why are we talking about this today? Well, there's a huge and odd internal debate right now over whether to label China as a currency manipulator that might have huge impacts on the upcoming talks with China. So let's start simple with the treasury report that's coming out next week researching whether China is a currency manipulator. Turns out, it's not because the US Treasury staff finds China isn't manipulating the Yuan. Well, this was a quick episode. Let's just hear from the Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, to take a quick victory lap. Can you clarify what's going to happen with the uh, issue as to whether you cite China as a manipulator? Because we all know the report is coming out. Uh, there have been lots of sources, stories attributed to your staff at the Treasury saying it is not going to happen. What, what clarity can you give us? Well, I'm not going to comment in advance of the report coming out next week. But what I would say is the stories are not accurate. Not the, I'm not going to comment on the conclusion one way or another. I love this administration because you can never tell if they're being coy or really have no idea what's going to happen next week. Before I keep going, there are some fundamental issues I need to point out. You might have heard reports like... With respect to the dollar versus the yuan, the Chinese currency, uh, it, it keeps getting weaker and weaker. It's hovering uh, near the weakest levels since January of 2017 and about ready to test levels we haven't seen since early 2008. Oh no, their currency is getting weaker? Great manipulation. Hey China, why don't you start manipulating your manufacturing sector too? could use some of those jobs back. In reality, a weak currency is a major goal of developing countries, to the point where international bodies have to step in and say, hey, stop devaluing your currency and give those countries with strong currencies a chance to compete. Mnuchin recently said, I expressed my concern about the weakness in the yuan currency and that any part of trade discussions, currency has to be a part of the discussion. Who knows though, maybe he just wants to be included in the cool kid trading negotiation discussions, rather than being forced to always eat his lunch alone in the treasury building. So this is where things start to get a little bit confusing, because how do you make the case that China is a malicious currency manipulator? You see, currency manipulation is not like burglary, where when you did it, well that's illegal. Instead it's more like polluting. You can make policies to legally increase pollution, but if pollution increases too much, well then people are going to start taking notice. For example, I wish I could think of a recent case of China making policies that would devalue its currency. Reuters reports China's central bank Sunday announced a steep cut in the level of cash that banks must hold as reserves. The country is stepping up moves to lower financing costs and spur growth. This amid concerns over the economic drag from an escalating trade dispute with the United States. The reserve requirement cut is the fourth by the People's Bank of China this year. Yeah, I literally just talked about that two episodes ago, without mentioning currency depreciation once. Putting all that new money into the market is definitely going to devalue the currency. But that's where all this gets muddled, because yeah, well that's definitely manipulating your currency, but in a way we do all the time, so carry on. So when is enough enough? To answer that, first we need to go back in time a little bit to understand everything. Because while it's generally presented as just a nerdy insult Trump can throw at a country that's annoying him, what? You think I'm a dotard? Well you're a currency manipulator. It actually had some legal clout. In 1988, Reagan signed the comically large Omnibus Trade and Competitiveness Act. I haven't seen people awkwardly leer at deciding that badly since my friends didn't want to tip less than me at a bar. Anyways, the Omnibus Trade and Competitiveness Act granted very real authority to the Secretary of the Treasury. Basically, he has the right to analyze on an annual basis the exchange rate policies of foreign countries. 
And then after that, consider whether the countries are manipulating the rate of exchange between their currency and the United States dollars for purposes of preventing effective balance of payments adjustments or gaining unfair competitive advantages in international trade. Well, okay, that sounded like something, but that really means very little. It's basically the polite and lawyerly way of saying, nah, if you're doing something we don't like with your currency, then we're going to call you out. So is that the end of the story? Not quite. Then we're going to hit you with the crippling punishment of having to spend an extended amount of time with Steve Mnuchin. I never thought I'd be quoted as looking like villains from the James Bond. I, I guess I should take that as a compliment that I look like a villain in a great successful James Bond movie. I'll take things you don't want to hear your treasury secretary say for 300, Alex. If we find you to be a currency manipulator, the law says that the secretary of the treasury shall take action to initiate negotiations with such foreign countries on an expedited basis in the International Monetary Fund or bilaterally. I really read through the entire US code on this one and its harshest words are, we'll talk about it. It's never a good sign when the federal government's ultimate punishment is the same one my parents use when I haven't done anything bad enough to warrant grounding. China, have you been manipulating your currency again? Come down, we need to talk. On the other side though, maybe we should talk it out. I've been hearing about China manipulating their currency since before I had a concept of what money even was. Why not label them a currency negotiator and get all of this over with? Well, as a number of experts have pointed out, the United States and China already are in negotiation over China's exchange rates, so it's not clear what the label would actually change. Well, and I can tell you what it would do. Make everything more bureaucratic, something that negotiators just love. Hey China, you know how you're currently in talks with our trade people and our executive branch? Well, wouldn't it be fun if you were separately talking to our treasury people too? There was the Currency Exchange Rate Oversight Reform Act of 2011, which would have attached tariffs as a punishment for currency manipulation. But it was successfully opposed by Republicans because... But the answer to these frustrations with China is not to start a trade war that will raise prices on many goods for American families at a time when they're already struggling. Especially when this approach has already been tried and failed to gain any positive results for American workers. Well, okay. Now, I'd love to call hypocrisy, but, well, we're in a much better economy than we were in 2011, so maybe not as funny as I would have hoped. Most recently, in 2015, Obama passed a trade law that constrained the Treasury Department. And with that, I'm going to sign the bill. That was the Trade Facilitation and Trade Enforcement Act of 2015, an act that was supposed to be tough on trade agreement violators, until we realized that we could just give the middle finger to the rest of the world. Just listen to some of these brags. One of the things I'm very proud of is that uh, we have ramped up enforcement of our trade laws to protect American workers and American businesses uh, like never before. Uh, in areas like steel, for example, we brought more cases uh, than we had in the previous decade. Yeah, that record's been shattered. This law defined a little better what the Treasury looked for in a currency manipulator by setting out three criteria. First, it must have a significant surplus with the United States. And don't worry, no surprise designed to make you feel like an idiot here. Definitely check. It's the second two rules where things start to fall apart a little bit. It would have to have a material trade surplus with the rest of the world. Well, that sounds like a second check, but while China's surplus with the United States is pretty big, almost $350 billion, its global surplus is modest. Although modest or not, it still has a consistent surplus. So we're still on track to call it a currency manipulator. It's this third piece that's the kicker. China would have to intervene persistently in foreign exchange markets to push its currency in one direction. But Stephen, you say, at the top you said they were consistently trying to weaken their currency. Well, turns out not really because in 2016 we heard... China's foreign currency reserves suffered their largest monthly fall on record in August. It's the result of heavy intervention by the central bank to support the yuan after last month's surprise devaluation. Well, be careful what you wish for. 
Here's the issue. From 2000 to 2014, China definitely suppressed the rise of the renminbi to maintain a competitive advantage for its exports. Textbook definition of currency manipulation. Basically, China was printing their money and exchanging it for trillions of yuan worth of foreign currency. Which, as anyone who ever bought anything will note, puts more yuan into the market and removes foreign currencies, devaluing the yuan. Could we have gone after them for that? Yes. Did we? No, but we sure did talk about it a lot. Then in 2014, as we saw above, it sold over $1 trillion from its foreign currency reserves to prop up the renminbi, under pressure from capital flight by Chinese companies and savers. Basically, companies and people with money were tired of an artificially terrible currency. So they went abroad and started dumping the yuan for US dollars, which was driving the yuan's value too low, forcing the People's Bank to have to start buying some back. An acceptable form of currency manipulation. So here we are today, stuck in an odd position of anger about the past that can be summed up in one New York Times message. Many learned economists and policy experts ruefully acknowledge that the president's intuition is broadly right. While labeling China as a currency manipulator now would look ridiculous, the United States should have done it a long time ago. Until we get the released Treasury Department report, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking the floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and lastly, remember to give me a thumbs up. As always, thank you for watching.